Hello everybody, welcome, welcome. How's the group doing? I hope everyone's doing well. You may be a little unwell after this video because we're talking about one of the most insane Bratz movies ever created. And I had actually never seen this Bratz movie until I received several requests to talk about it. That feels good to say. To say that I've received requests and have that actually be true is a milestone for me. So the movie we are going to be discussing today is Bratz Kids Sleepover Adventure. Now, the director of this film was also the same director of Bratz Super Baby, so we know that this is already going to be good. So we start off with the girls walking with someone I assume is a father, and they are walking illegally slow. If I had been walking behind them or toward them, I would be crossing the street out of rage. So we get a line that kind of sets up the entire vibe of the movie. Strange things can happen on a full moon. No truer words were said because this was the strangest, strangest things. Strange, strange things, stranger things. So the girls finally get to their location and they're pulling up to this house that looks quite nice. It looks like a really regular, nice house with nicely cut grass and really nice exterior. And if I had the choice, I would make my house look like this in Animal Crossing if they had ever expanded their exterior options. So Sasha's dad is with them and he just pulls up and he's like, okay, bye. And just turns around. Like he doesn't try to meet the parents at all. He doesn't walk them even on the property. He just completely 180s. He's so I did my job. I'm taking this wagon with me, by the way. No one rode in the wagon. What was the point of the wagon? They didn't put any of their stuff in it. Okay, so now we're getting to the good stuff. We're getting our plot set up here, which is basically Sasha had met this girl outside of an abandoned movie theater and none of the other girls have ever met her. But apparently this girl was just like, you guys can sleep over at my house. And Sasha was like, okay. And invited all of the girls to sleep over at this stranger's house. Would I personally do this? No, I wouldn't. So the girl's name is Ginger and she's also a ginger. Now, I don't know if they did this purposely. They had to, she's ginger and her name's Ginger. But that reminds me of the show Ginger. Was this a nod to the show Ginger? Do you guys remember that show? Oh my God, I'm having flashbacks. Oh my God, yeah. As told by Ginger and she was also a ginger. <sighs> what if this is like a, a multiverse thing and that's actually as told by Ginger. This could go deep. This could be an iceberg moment, but we don't have time to get into that. The parents are creepy, but they kind of seem nice. I don't know. Your new friends look so nice. Come on in, girls. They are giving very odd vibes, but honestly, I was just like, whatever. Everything is weird in this movie. In case anyone was worried if their hair was like liquid as it was in Brad's Super Babies, I'm happy to say. The hair is very liquid, really a lot of movement, a lot of body, a lot of main character energy. And I will be pointing it out every time it looks ridiculous. I will be doing that. So we get started with the sleepover and the girls are just doing what I think any middle-aged man thinks middle school girls do at sleepovers. I love sleepover montages of girl sleepovers, which is like pinning nails, braiding hair, dancing, which does happen, but they miss out on the parts where you make a Sims character of your crush and make them marry you and have like four generations of children and reading fan fiction, which also happens. So they do skip on some very important pieces of girl culture. I should make my own movie where I make a sleepover montage and it's real and what the girls are actually doing. Also, while they're dancing, they have their shoes on inside and on the furniture. What kind of lessons are we teaching? So one thing about Sasha is she's gonna say she's going to do the worm and then not do it. This is not the worm. This is not the worm, Sasha. Did the animators like not figure out how to make her character do the worm so they just figured something else out? I don't know, but that was crazy. You wanna see a worm, Sasha? I literally haven't done this since sixth grade. And if one of my roommates walks in, I'm going to... <laughs> The girls really are doing some unique dance moves, so I can't fault them for that, but Ginger does look terrified by these moves, which is fair. So Ginger's mom tells the girls it's time to go to bed, but 
girls aren't going to bed. So they all get up at the same time with these very creepy green light bulb flashlights. This is Ginger's first sleepover, so she doesn't know the rules. But the girls kind of explain to her, uh, this is what you do at sleepovers. I don't know why, but the way the girls explain to Ginger what you do at a sleepover feels very bullying coded. Ginger, you're with girlfriends that know how to have fun. I don't know what that means. The cool thing about this movie is each girl tells their own version of a scary story. So Sasha tells her story and we really do start off strong with Sasha's because this was kind of a genius story. So Megan, Yasmin, and Sasha are at a mirror fun house and they're being silly, they're having fun. And then Sasha kind of goes on her own to this mirror called the doppelganger. And Sasha's having fun. She's playing, she's, you know, doing some sweet moves in the mirror, except the mirror isn't completely matching her movements. So... <laughs> yeah, there's an entity in the mirror that is the doppelganger of Sasha. But then the doppelganger comes out of the mirror and starts like running around and Sasha chases her down. And then once she approaches the doppelganger, she gets scared and then runs away. And then the doppelganger is chasing her. So Sasha's just like terrified and running around. And I'm just like, can't you fight yourself? That would be so scary. I don't think I could actually fight myself. Mm, that's actually a good question to ask. As Jasmine is running away from this doppelganger, she ends up in another fun house and she's surrounded by doppelgangers of herself. And one of the mirrors, trades places with her and she ends up inside the mirror like stuck wait, wait. and then it ends and i'm sorry is this not the plot to us because it feels really similar could you imagine if jordan peele saw this and was like that's an incredibly great story and i'm going to write an entire film based on this brat's scary story so next up it's chloe's turn but ginger's kind of getting resistant and saying mm, i don't know if we should stay up my mom's gonna get mad and chloe's like shut up so chloe's story starts off with her and her parents walking around and they run into a puppy store i guess some sort of store i don't know what you would call a place you buy puppies pet smart anyway they see puppies and chloe's like oh my god i want a puppy so bad and her parents are like mm -mm -mm, you aren't responsible enough but you can dog sit a neighbor's dog and see if you can prove yourself and your responsibility to have a dog and so she's like okay her parents give her a number to a random address to dog sit and pick up the dog to dog sit and it's a little bit creepy when she's knocking on the door because there's like a man's voice as she knocks Come in. And uh, give me a steak. And then like the owner of the dog comes and is like, hey, uh, are you here to pick up the dog? And she's like, yeah. And so the owner has a muzzle on the dog and the dog does not like it. So Chloe starts feeling bad for the dog because it, the dog has a muzzle on. So she takes it off and the dog just starts talking with the like most unreasonable voice ever. That is correct. Shorty. And something about this dog is this dog is a menace to society. One of my favorite lines in this movie is when the dog says, I call this a life. 10 years old and I ain't never been to Paris. It was so insane to hear that. And he was right. 10 years old and I haven't been to Paris. I've never been to Paris. I'm 26. Damn. Also, the bowl on Chloe's head is truly fighting for its life. I don't know how it's staying on her head. There's no laws in the Bratz world I've learned and that's just something we're gonna have to accept. So Chloe wants to show her mom the dog, but the refrigerator is so warped, it makes me angry. And I don't know what it is about this refrigerator. It just made me uncomfortable. I don't know why they shaped the refrigerator like that because everything else is so normally shaped. And then the refrigerator just looks like you use face tuned it weird. <laughs> So Chloe wants to show her mom that the dog is talking, but the dog refuses to talk. A true menace. Were you silent or were you silenced? The music is also incredibly crazy in this movie. Chloe has to eat, but she's scared to kind of leave the dog alone. So she puts the dog in her room, closes the door and goes to eat really fast. When she comes back upstairs, the dog is talking on the phone ordering takeout. So Chloe comes in and she's like, um, we need to cancel this order. I can't pay for this food. And the dog's like, sorry, it's already on its way. Like he just got off the phone. 
He's like, sorry, it's on its way. You can't cancel it. Can't argue with that. So Chloe's like, okay, I have to collect money. And so she scrapes together $65 somehow and then pays the takeout person. And this is truly the fastest takeout I've ever seen in my life. So then they go to bed and Chloe's literally sleeping on the floor and the dog is having nightmares. And he's kind of talking in his sleep and basically explaining everything he's afraid of, which is like, baths and like wearing clothes and things like that and chloe hears him and she's like oh i'm getting revenge the transitions in this movie are truly next level i've never seen anything so camp in my life <laughs> The transitions in this movie are like Windows Movie Maker if Windows Movie Maker never got updated from the first version. Let's start doing that on the channel. Let's start having crazy transitions. I don't even know if I can find a transition that looks like that. So then Chloe is doing all of the things that the dog was afraid of, making him have a bath, putting clothes on him, doing all of that stuff. And then the dog's like, fine, fine, you won. What do you want from me? And she was like, okay, I'm gonna take you back to your owner. And he's like, okay. And so she takes him back. And then her parents are like, oh my gosh, Chloe, like, we're so proud of you. You did such a good job with that little dog. And she's like, thank you. And then they give her a puppy, but then they randomly get a pizza <laughs> delivered to them. And the puppy's like, mm, it was me. And so, yeah, Jade literally was like, Chloe, that wasn't scary, which she was right about that. What I am confused about is they are telling scary stories, but Chloe was like, this happened in my own neighborhood, but she was telling it from her point of view. So I'm like, did this happen to you? And you're just saying it was in your own neighborhood because you don't want to say it was you? Or are you just doing a little POV moment? I was a little bit confused. So next up, we have Megan telling her story. Basically, she is at a carnival with her sister and her sister's friend. And she really, really, really wants pie. She's been waiting all year to eat this pie. The carnival only happens once a year and she's wanting this pie. She's waiting in line. But her sister's friend is like, we're not waiting with you. We do not want to wait in this line. We want to move on. And her sister is also like, yeah, we have to move on. We can't wait in this line. Is it the thanks that I get for putting you bitches on? And Megan's like, well, I want to have this pie. And they're like, sorry, we'll have a treat later. But she's like, I want this treat. And they're like, no. Okay, there's this moment in Megan's story that I think is the perfect representation of the early 2000s Bratz movies. And that's when this security guard just completely shoulder checks Megan's sister. <laughs> The animators were like, this would be funny. It had not a single ounce of significance. It's crazy. He purposely stepped in front of her to shoulder check her. So they're walking around and then Megan spots the Riptide, the ride she's been wanting to go on the whole year. There it is in the flesh. But one bad thing is the line is very long. And the older sister and her friend are like, oh, we're not waiting in this line. We'll come back when it's shorter, which is fair. So Megan's sister's name is Tanya and Tanya's hair is her own character. Tanya's hair is actually on the credits list because Tanya's hair is next level. So the older girls are basically just winning in every debate with Megan and are like, okay, let's go on this spinny ride. <laughs> Now, when I saw this ride, I got flashbacks because I have been on this ride before and I had gotten sick on this ride. It's like the zero gravity ride where you're spinning so fast, you like stick to the walls. I did this at Wisconsin Dells. And if you're from the Midwest and have been to Wisconsin Dells, you know the vibes. I went on this ride like four times. And on the fourth time, I had never felt so bad in my life. I remember it still. I think I might've been like nine years old. So when I saw this, it hit home for me. And the fact that the guy next to Megan barfed on her. Megan is not doing well at this carnival. She got barfed on and then had to change shirts. And then her older sister and her friend made fun of her for the shirt she was wearing. That is so sibling to be like, go on this ride with me. You have to do it. Get thrown up on and then change into something where I'm going to make fun of you. Also, something I noticed about this carnival is it's so messy. It is so disgusting there. <laughs> anyway, Megan sneaks away from the older girls and gets in line for pie. She sees a whole pie and she's like, okay, I'm getting a piece of this pie. She cuts the line, there's one piece left and then the clown takes it. He literally goes, ow. How did they get rid of the pie so fast? So then she runs into the older girls and she's like, well, the pie has gone. So I hope you guys are really pleased with yourselves because I'm really sad. And they're like, oh, let's get ice cream. 
that's a good secondary thing to pie, which I, I would agree with that. And so Megan gets her ice cream cone and then the freaking clown bumps into her and she spills her ice cream on the floor. So Megan's had it at this point after the ice cream and her sister and her friend are like, let's go to a magic show. And Megan's like, I literally don't want to go. And they're like, we literally don't care. So they go to the magic show. This is another iconic moment in Megan's story is one of the magician's assistants is like, I need your help or sin your miracle won't appear. And Megan just goes, so? I need your help or sin your miracle won't appear. So? That was so funny to me and I don't know why. It was just, it felt very real. So Megan, favorite brats? Maybe, maybe she's winning us over. Anyway, of course, Megan gets chosen to be brought up on stage and they put her in this little box and he's like, mm, 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 mm. everyone's gonna disappear because she's been wishing that everyone just left her alone and would disappear, whatever. So she walks out and everyone's gone. It's crazy actually. And she's like, oh hell yeah, I'm gonna ride the freaking Riptide baby. She gets on it and someone starts it. We don't know who, cause no one's there, but the ride goes and she does get stuck on it cause there's no one to stop it. So I don't know how it got started, but not stopped. We're not gonna ask questions, but one thing that was really funny is they just used the same animation clip of her going down. <laughs> And also by the 10th time she was on the ride, her hands were up. She was ready to go. Like she was feeling all right. So she finally just jumps off and it looked pretty easy. So I don't know why she didn't do that earlier. And then she just starts seeing a lot of creepy clown paraphernalia everywhere. And there's just a lot of creepy clowns. And she's like, oh, I hate this. But then she's like, mm, maybe I'm a baddie. So then she like goes into the little box and is repeating the spell that was cast on her. And it didn't work the first time and she's like, mm, weird. And then she sees this magic wand and it got me thinking, why do magicians magic wands look like that? And they look very different than wizard wands. What makes a wizard wand different from a magician's wand? Why do they look different? I don't know, something to think about. So anyway, when she uses the magic wand with the spell, it works. And she's reunited with her older sister and her friend and they felt bad. So they're like, okay, do you wanna go on the riptide? And she's like, no, and I don't want pie. And then the, it kind of ends with maniacal clown laughter. And it's really insane. <laughs> Whoever was the voice actor for this maniacal clown did an amazing job. I don't know if it was stock sound effects because I have a sneaky feeling that most of the sound effects from this film were from a stock website. But anyway, Ginger's like, okay guys, can we go to bed? I'm scared and I'm tired and I just want to listen to my mom because she respects her mom. And the girls are like, no, Ginger, this is not a real sleepover unless everybody tells a scary story. And then they hear a weird noise outside. And they're like, what was that? And Ginger's like, nothing. Actually, you couldn't tell another scary story. So something's a little bit sketchy with Ginger. Mm -hmm. Okay, now it's Yasmin's turn to tell a story. And as much as I want to tell the whole thing in detail, we're not going to do that. So I'm going to give you a recap very briefly because her story isn't super important to the plot of the movie. Basically, she's in the car talking with her mom about this charm bracelet that every girl in the school has and she needs one, which I really resonate with because, you know, there was silly band and then there was like the I Heart Boobies bracelets. Those weirdly became very popular in my school. There was also those like cool little charm bracelets I do remember when I was like super young I felt that because I never liked being left out with the trends her mom's like those are really expensive you don't need one and it's a trend you're not even gonna care about it in like a week and Yasmin's not hearing it at all they're going to a mall to buy a birthday present for Yasmin's friend because she has a birthday party tomorrow so her mom gives her money to buy a present but Yasmin uses the money to buy a charm bracelet for herself and then buys her friend something else so she goes to the birthday party and the girls whose birthday it was notices Yasmin's charm bracelet and is like that's so beautiful I wish I had one and Yasmin is like damn she gives her the present and Yasmin is like writhing in pain so embarrassed of the present she got and her friend was so sweet so yasmin got her a vase and the friend was like i've been wanting a vase then she like puts the bracelet away but it keeps finding its way back to her and eventually she tries to like throw it in a river because she can't seem to get rid of this bracelet it keeps coming back to her then she's just like freaking out and later on 
Yasmin's mom is like, oh my gosh, your friend whose birthday it was, I don't remember her name, broke the vase and she feels really bad. And then Yasmin's like, oh my God, I have the perfect gift for her. So she gives her the charm bracelet and that's kind of it. So finally we have Jade's story, which arguably is the most iconic story of them all. So the four main girls are at an amusement park and they're about to ride this very scary ride. And Jade's like, I'm not scared. And the girls are like, oh no, this one's scary. You haven't even been on this ride. Like it's really scary, Jade. And Jade's like, I'm not scared. So even the employee at the amusement park is like, some kid disappeared in here. Why would you share that? That's so bad for PR. Yeah, some kid disappeared in here. Are you allowed to share that? Is that, did you sign an NDA, sir? So on the ride, Jade is like, this is fake. Fake. This is fake. Not real. This is lame. Fake. Which I I understand why the girls were annoyed because they're like, let's just have fun, Jade. We get it, the cat's fake. And then they end up in the mouth of a dinosaur, which was a little confusing. I just like didn't understand the theme of this ride. I guess it must've just been scary. That was the theme, scary the ride. And then Chloe's eyes start glowing while they're in the dinosaur's mouth. Eventually, all of the girls' eyes except for Jade start glowing, which was weird. And then they literally turn into monsters. Ah, Chloe. Ah. So yeah, and Jade's like running away from them and they're chasing her and it's like crazy, but the girls turn into monsters. <laughs> what? And then eventually Jade runs into a dead end and she's like, okay, I'm just gonna dance it out. Dances her way out, runs away. And then eventually she like wakes up and it was all a dream while she was on the ride. And the girls got off the ride and then Chloe tucks in her tail. So sneaky feeling they were really monsters. I don't know. What are your theories? There's a lot of plot holes in this also, but plot holes allow for theories. So maybe this was actually intentional by the writers. So at this point, it feels like Ginger is literally traumatized and is like, guys, can we please go to bed? And the girls are like, uh, 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 no, no, no. You have to tell a story also. And she's like, are you serious? <laughs> oh my God, okay, I don't know any. I don't know how to tell a scary story. I don't even like hearing them. So she starts telling the story and then they're like, yawn, this is bad. This story sucks, Ginger. <laughs> And she's like, okay, let me, uh, let me keep going. So eventually Ginger gets so scared of her own story that she just runs out and like freaks out. And the girls are like, shoot, are we bad people? Let's go talk to her. And as they're navigating their way through the house, they like find this weird room that looks abandoned. And then they're like, oh, what's going on? And they get really scared and they run onto the house and the house is abandoned. No trespassing. What? The house transformed? That was crazy. That was crazy cinema right there. As the girls are running away from the house and all the scary stuff, they kind of like run into all of the scary stories they've interacted with. The dog, the like doppelganger. I didn't see anything about the charm bracelet probably because they knew that that one was just not good. And Megan's like, okay, we can go to my house. They knock on the door at Megan's house and who answers? Ginger and her dad. What? They get scared. They're like, oh my God. And then they go to another house. It's Ginger and her dad and the mom. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is scary. This is true crime. This is true crime. This is, this is very the haunting. So they're running around and they're freaking out. And then they just kind of turn into monsters. Then one of them is like, strange things happen on a full moon. So that was it. And I also love how two of the monsters are just like identical. Like they didn't feel like changing the color so that they all were different colors. They just were like, let's just make two of these red. Copy paste. So that was the movie. And it is crazy that this was approved for some reason. I just think everyone in the, my comments in my last video was like, okay, yeah, Brat Super Babies was crazy. But Brat's Sleepover Adventure was traumatizing. The amount of you who have discussed how scary this was for you as children is concerning. I watched this as an adult and I was like, this is unnerving. I feel like that's the best way to describe this movie. I think what's so crazy about this movie is when you watch a Goosebumps episode, you know that it's going to be scary. Whereas if you watch a Brad's Kids Sleepover Adventure movie, you're not expecting to be very scared. So I think that has contributed to it a little bit about why this was so traumatizing for a lot of children. 
So on Google reviews, it was ranked 4.3 stars with 45 ratings. We have a review. Realizing I watched this and loved it as a kid, I'm ashamed of myself. No wonder my dad hates me. No wonder I hate myself. I watched stuff like this and thought it was good. I can't take this seriously. What is the ending? What is this whole movie? Why were my standards so low? This may be the saddest thing I've ever realized about myself. If I could go back and rip my eyes out, I would. The ending has me questioning if someone spiked my drink in the last five minutes. Screams of genuine pain escape my body, making it sound like Satan himself was trying to escape. I will never look at myself the same again. Don't set your standards so low. This isn't worth nostalgia. It's not worth anything. I'm terrified that some people enjoyed this in any way did the positive <coughs> happy 14th anniversary brats kids sleepover adventure have a great day we love you brats kids she is 14 years old today she is all grown up now she is a big girl now i think that this movie was a cornerstone in um horror especially that it potentially could have inspired the movie us by jordan peele so I think that was an interesting experience. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching it with me. Let me know if you guys want to see any other movies, Bratz, Barbie, early 2000s, or literally any other movie. I don't care. I will watch anything and talk about it with you all. I actually received a telegram today saying that if you subscribe to my channel, you will be silly, wealthy, and gorgeous in 2023. Um, so I'm just passing along that message. Love you all. Goodbye.